Okay, we're going to have a look at some reverse around a corner. The whole idea of reversing around a corner is to turn around to face the opposite direction. And what we always do, we drive past the corner and then reverse back in. We never drive into the corner and reverse out. So we're going to practice this on the left reverse. Excuse me, backing up a second. And the first stage is to get from here at the start of the corner across to the other side. So we'll go through our prepare, observe and maneuver routine. It's a normal move off. And when we do move off, make sure that we're appreciating how much space there is behind us. We're not just moving off and accelerating down the road. We're moving off and parking in here. So when we do move off, appreciate that you might need a little bit more space with the vehicles that are coming up behind. When you get to this sort of area, have a look in your road and make sure that you've got three or four car length space in here. You need this area free to make sure there's enough room when we park here that people can come past and get back to the correct side of the road to do their turn. We also need to make sure there's no kids playing or any parked cars within this area and also this isn't a one-way street or a no entry. Once you're happy that it's safe and legal to do the manoeuvre, we're going to be applying a mirror signal manoeuvre routine to park in back on the left hand side. But make sure if you do signal, you don't confuse anyone. Only signal until or when you're after the centre line of the new road, if needed. When we're parking in, give yourself a little bit more space away from the kerb than normal. Um, if I just back this up just a second, you'll see our space from the kerb here is quite tight fine but when we are parked across the other side give yourself a little bit more room that gives us a little bit more room to maneuver and only park only a couple of car lengths past the corner remember only reverse for as long as necessary so we've arrived here at the other side of the corner now we need to reverse back and start our reverse back in whilst we're doing this maneuver we're going to be controlling the car at a nice slow speed using clutch control We'll be setting the gas and finding the bite and moving the car at less than walking speed. If your car goes too fast, dip the clutch down about the thickness of a pound coin. If your car goes too slow and stops, lift the clutch up the thickness of a pound coin. If you've got to use the brake to stop the car or control the speed, that's fine as well. But as slow as we can. Normal things again, prepare the car into reverse, observe everywhere, and then we're going to start our manoeuvre. But to do our observations, we're going to do the six point check as we discussed leaving the car park, all the way around our car. And what we're looking for is anyone coming in within two or three car lengths of our car, all the way around it. And if anyone's going to arrive in that area from any direction at any point within two or three seconds, we're going to stop and wait for them. So you'll be doing these all round observations probably six or seven times throughout the maneuver. Once here at the start, definitely again before we do our turn because as we steer to the left, the front of the car swings out. And then again, another few times as we're going around the corner, we're in a dangerous position here. So make sure you're again, you're checking all the way around the car and then again a little bit further back you get the idea so we're checking plenty of times throughout this maneuver possibly every half to one car length that we move we need to do another check around everywhere but it also depends on the length of time so we're here at the start of the corner we've got to reverse back until our rear wheels which are just underneath the rear seats are alongside the first curved curbstone and that's going to be our turning point. Now, how we judge when the car is there is we're going to be looking out the back of the car, out the back quarter window, which is this sort of area. We're not going to be able to see really close to the back of the car because of where the car's positioned in relation to the curb. But what we will see is the curve of the corner seeming to be about at the top of the back seats and it's going to be different with different window configurations but this is approximately what it's going to look in this car 
We get to this position because the rear wheels sit just underneath the rear seats. So if we get to this position, the rear wheels are in a position to start curving around the corner. Also, when you get back to this turning point, you may be able to see, or you should be able to see, a tiny little bit of curve left, just in the bottom left-hand corner of your mirror. And that's another way of telling you're about at your turning point. So, we're here at our turning point. What we're then gonna do is, as we've said, make sure it's clear, and we're gonna move our car and put one steer to the left on. So you're gonna turn your wheel all the way around once, 360 degrees, so we start heading around the corner. That amount of steer isn't going to be perfect for every single corner that we go around. We're then going to have to adjust that amount of steering to depend on how sharp the corner is. So we'll move our car and start steering. And what we're then trying to do is to keep our car in the same position with this curve. So what we're looking for is those same couple of pictures will still look for the tiny little bit of curb in the left hand door mirror and the curb to be in the same sort of position in the back window. Now if you excuse me just flipping past this next photo a second this is an idea of what it would look like if your car was going too wide. Notice where it was before it was further up the window now the curb has come further down the window and that means the back of the car is actually further away from the corner. So in this situation, you'd steer a little bit towards the curb. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to keep the car in the same position as we go around this corner. When we get to about this position here, what we will see is we won't see the curve of the corner anymore. We're going to see the straight part. What we do in that situation, we leave our steering wheel the same and maybe go back and check our left mirror again to make sure again we see a tiny little bit of curb in the left mirror. If it's all looking good and we don't have to steer towards or away from the curb, what we can then do is leave the car going round the corner and now we're going to focus out the back window. And what we're going to see out the back window is the curb here seeming to come across the back window and be close to the middle of the back window. Excuse me swiping through a couple of pictures a second. So there's the curb in the middle of the back window and that's when we know we're about in the same position as we were to start. In other words we're next to the curb and what we will then do is steer away from the curb again approximately one, one turn of the wheel, one full turn of the wheel and then our car is going to be straight in a position to head back. We'll spend most of our time looking out the back, but again with these all round observations, not just checking in the left door mirror, and then we're going to reverse back three or four car lengths, finishing in a park position with the curb. Have you got any questions? All these briefings are used on the iPad with apps produced by a guy called Neil Beaver. I use these apps on a daily basis. They're quite simply the best on the market. I'm not being paid to say this about these apps. I would turn around and recommend these apps to anyone learning to be a driving instructor.